So this is a walk around of my uh, Superlight Coupe or SLC. Start off by walking around. So starting at the front, I have a carbon fiber theme that runs pretty strongly throughout the car. Um, so I created a strip of carbon that runs along the front, along the top, roof of the car, down the middle, including the uh, carbon scoop back here, and then the uh, optional uh, carbon fiber rear wing. Some more carbon fiber accent over here. We've got the side skirts, which I uh, skinned in carbon fiber. Kind of hard to see, but turned out pretty nicely. Started out with the fiberglass piece, and then I skinned it in, in the carbon fiber. Uh, at the front, um, I opened up the rear discharge or the radiator duct, uh, made it larger, and then actually made a radiator box that di directs all um, exhaust air from the radiator through this duct and out through this uh, opening that you see here with the heavy insulation throughout. I already talked about the carbon fiber along the top here, along the uh, doors. Um, these uh, louvers on the back, these are the Aspire louvers, which are an option from RCR. And then I have this carbon fiber uh, rear intake scoop, uh, which I made. I've also got the uh, APR carbon fiber uh, side mirrors. And then as far as uh, modifications of the bodywork go, a little bit hard to see here, but um, the side duct over here has been increased from the uh, factory standard. Um, it's very subtle, but what I also did was I recontoured the front of the uh, wheel well, and in the back over here, at the back of the uh, rear wheel well there. And the reason why I did that was because when the suspension was at full droop, if I wanted to pull the front or rear tires off, uh, I had kind of a tough time because it was close to fouling. Uh, you can also see I powder coated the uh, brakes. And then last uh, external thing here is uh, the uh, roof mounted uh, housing for my rear view mirror. So this is how you open the uh, back. So in the back here we've got a uh, LS3 525 uh, crate motor with the LS7 headers and then a custom exhaust going out the back, ceramic coated. Uh, I've got a three quart accu sump and an oil cooler here which gets ducted from uh, the side vent. Fuel system here and the uh, ubiquitous Graziano. Uh, V8 transaxle in the back. At the back we've got the uh, LED taillights with a slight modification to the bodywork to give it the uh, look of two circles. And kind of what it looks like from the rear there. Um, I normally have uh, side plates on the end of the, uh, the wings here but I'm uh, making a new set so they're currently not on the car. Going in, let's take a look at the interior. 
How is it getting into the SLC? Well, here's how I do it. So this car has the optional uh, carbon fiber tub, which includes the uh, full surround in the lower here, upper rear bulkhead, and then uh, the ceiling panel. Uh, Tillet B5 seats, and that's a carbon fiber uh, center console, which I made. And there's the Audi R8 shift mechanism. I'm running the AIM MXS uh, dash unit with a Momo steering wheel and an energy quick release. As far as door panels go, there's a carbon fiber door insert here, and then a trim piece along the top, which looks like it's pretty difficult to see. You can see it here. It's a carbon fiber door insert and then a, a trim panel that goes all the way up here as well. So there's the foot box. Gas, head pedal, clutch, brake. Actually pretty easy to heel and toe. Not too difficult at all. Here's a shot of the uh, carbon fiber doors, speaker, and the, uh, the trim panel. Ignition switch to the right here. Thanks to uh, Eric from Gearhead Daily for my startup screen. And there we go. So this is the AIM MXS dash display. Uh, I got a blinking red light there. That's telling me that my uh, oil pressure is too low, obviously because the engine is off and there's no oil pressure. Blue light there is just to tell me that my uh, water temps are a little bit cool and I shouldn't be getting on the car too hard. And it's got various displays that you can cycle through. This is kind of the diagnostic screen that I would use. And that's typically what I drive uh, looking at. Uh, shift lights up here. Um, this is the factory included uh, lighting stock. Works just like a normal car. It's got a clock spring uh, with the uh, steering wheel here for the horn. Uh, let's take the steering wheel. One of the nice things about this energy um, uh, adapter, quick release, is that um, it's indexed. So however you put the steering wheel on, there's only one way that can actually go on and locks in place. So real nice there. You don't have to worry about putting your steering wheel on crooked and wondering and hoping uh, whether or not you got that right. On the left over here, I've got my hazard switch, uh, two different sets of fog lights, and then the uh, button for my uh, e-stop uh, electronic brake, uh, parking brake. Don't get one. It's not very good. There's the AutoVox X2 rear view monitor. And there's the view out the back. Unfortunately, quite a bit of glare coming in through, uh, through here, so it's difficult to make out. It's really nice. You can adjust the view depending on what angle you uh, you prefer. Yeah, that's kind of generally how I like to set it. Uh, works really well. Uh, you can see uh, three lanes of traffic, so the, the lane directly behind you, to your left and to your right. Uh, between that and the side view mirrors, uh, you really don't have uh, much of a, a blind spot at all. These mirrors are surprisingly uh, effective. Over here we've got the HVAC controls, um, this is blower speed, this controls air conditioning temperature, the switch controls whether I want air conditioning or heater, and then this controls the, um, the heater uh, temperature setting. This is an ILX uh, 107 radio, it's got uh, CarPlay uh, functionality, and uh, I've also got a manual override here to boot it over into a near field rear view camera so when I'm backing into like a parking spot for instance this is a little more effective and handy than the auto box is so this lets me see down low real close and this is a little bit further 
further away. And there's the toggle switch for that uh, camera. Uh, this button here, or this toggle over here, is for my uh, accumulator. Over uh, override switch. This is for the fan. Manual override. A little microphone down there for uh, hands-free calling. And then this switch right over here is for my uh, front lift. Push that. Get the front lift. And that horrible sound says you're all the way up. And hit the button. Comes down pretty quick. And this is the Audi R8 uh, shifter mechanism. Now this has really made a huge difference in terms of, uh, I'll say, the comfort and joy to driving this car. Uh, I had installed the original factory supplied shifter and I did not even want to go-kart with that thing in my car. I was so afraid that I was going to money shift the car, get it in the wrong gear, that I just I didn't feel like I could drive the car at all. But with this, real simple, there's neutral. And there's a re reverse lockout, so you can't accidentally get into reverse. To get into reverse, you push down, pull towards you, and there you go. Real nice, effective. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a, an experience to get used to driving uh, a gated shifter, but boy, is it, uh, it's really fun. It really makes it feel so much nicer to drive this car, having this shifter mechanism. As far as the dash panel goes, this is a fairly um, heavily modified uh, piece um, that Superlight offers. So normally the way you get it, this center binnacle is attached or uh, stitched right next to the driver binnacle here. And unfortunately that just wasn't working for me because when I have the steering wheel in place, it was going to block half of the screen here. And I wanted to have a functional uh, navigation uh, screen. So in order to... Um, address that issue, I basically split the uh, dash panel in half down the middle, pushed the center binnacle over, and then I had to rebuild this section over here. Now what that allowed me to do was that it allowed me to create a new pod here for an air conditioning vent. So this is a third air conditioning vent. And then I've actually created a fourth one up here. So this is actually my defrost. And what that allows me to do is turn defrost on by just pushing this open and then I can direct the air wherever I want. If I don't need defrost, I don't want to lose any air pressure through here. So I just close that and have all air directed either at me or have the, uh, the passenger side directed over at me. I... And here's what it's like when the steering wheel is in place. So you can see if my hand is here and my navigation screen is right here, I really wouldn't be able to use it at all. But now, with it in place, this is about the, the view that I've got for my head. So my eyeballs can make, make out the map or whatever it is that I'm trying to look at on that unit. Fairly simple. Since it's got CarPlay uh, integration, it's fairly hands-free. You really don't need to interact with it too much. But it is nice to have the map there active uh, for when you're driving around. So this is the factory fiberglass A-pillar cover. I highly recommend that you go with the fiberglass piece because you're going to have to do a fair amount of fitting to get it to fit um, your to the ceiling panel over here. I also modified mine so that uh, I could include a speaker pod right there for the tweeter with the second one in the door right there.